so the bathroom faucet ended up leaking anyway and what I was using was that shark bite product it's the um, female NPT so national pipe thread and what's happening is is that this uh, rubber seal is too large for the inside diameter of these RV uh, fixtures as an example here's a straight one the one that I was using in the bathroom was a, a right angle one and so you can see that it just barely fits in there so at a, in a perfect scenario where you had it straight in there it'll it'll seal okay but the slightest little error and, and you're gonna have a leak uh, like I did and so essentially what we need to do here is uh, come up with another solution uh, for these uh, faucets and it seems like the only uh, option are these these pre-made supply lines so here what I have is something and it's labeled half inch FIP and so what that stands for is IPS iron pipe standard so the solution is to use these supply lines they worked on the kitchen sink they worked on the bathroom sink and I need to somehow get this to uh, connect here the only problem that I have is I can't find anything that's a right angle and that's what I was trying to do there I wanted something that's right angle so I'm gonna have to jam this in there and then somehow create a good enough radius for the whole thing to work so this is something I bought online and essentially what I'm doing is I'm going to omit the uh, the water miser feature that re that has the hot supply that has the hot water supply return that returns it to the uh, fresh water tank and so this is just you know it's simple I got hot cold shower head out so there's no bathroom faucet and really the this is the standoff that I should be using this two hole standoff um, I purchased it but the shower surround its cutout is so large I won't be able to use this uh, at least right away and so the I so the idea is to use the original standoff with the new faucet I'll go ahead and seal all the way around and then I'm just gonna plug that hole with some plastic or I don't know maybe I'll put a silver dollar there and alright so I I cleaned off the silicone using the little uh, scraper tool here so I just went ahead and just scraped around cleaned all that up and uh, now I have to replace these right angle female half inch female fitting that I installed earlier and what I'm going to replace them with as, as I mentioned is this supply line and what I'm choosing is a half inch to half inch a common one would be like three eighths to half inch and uh, this is all uh, iron pipe standard the irony here is I have this pre-made fastener and I also have this which is a shark bite product which is they they market as a half inch PEX to male NPT so this would be national pipe thread but the threads and I tried it on various products these threads are parallel they're straight threads and they're fitting here I'm going to connect the supply lines to the half inch adapter and so what I will use also is a shark bite product which is these uh, half inch steel bands or half inch pipe half inch PEX uh, bands so I purchased these tools here which I thought were going to be able to remove the steel bands on the other plumbing and uh, I don't know I I'm not, I don't know, I'm not going to take the time to figure this one out. So I'm going to abandon that idea and then I'm going to simply just cut these lines off here. I'm going to start with the one that I have the most access to. And then so this is the part that's not working and I actually need this. I thought I was going to reuse it so hopefully I can when, now that I have more, I got to break that steel band off of there and reuse this part because I'm going to reuse it for my water pump that's also leaking. and then I'm going to chamfer the uh, 
the outside diameter so I can get that steel band over it. Once I get the steel band over it, I should be able to finish cleaning up. Okay, that was not easy. Ugh. Okay, now I got... I got my half-inch male adapter here. So that's on there nice and deep. Then I just need to go ahead and cinch this down. And hopefully that'll seal it up. So not you don't need a lot of torque. I mean, this is kind of like a hand tight kind of scenario here. I had to use this access area here. So basically I just put my hand back there and just pulled the slack down. And then I went after the, the cold water supply. So I got it sitting right here. I'm going to try this tool right here. Let's see if I can't get this thing. I just, I just want to. There we go. Let's nice. See if I can get this thing off now. Okay, so I got the adapter off. Let me get that ring off. Okay, that's the old ring. So on with the new band. And I'm just going to twist it past where the old band was. Now I'm going to clean that up with a straight blade here. That wasn't perfectly straight. I'm a little scared. I think I'm getting it. I'm just going to come in from this side here. Can see where the high spots at. I I went at the high spot coming from one side, and instead of just coming around with the blade, I, I stopped and then came around this side, so I didn't slice my wrist open. And of course, the objective here is to have this damn thing in here. And I'm not gonna. On the other one, I put I put it really close to the band. On this one. Not so much because there wasn't room to get the crimping tool onto it. So we're going to open this up as far as it would go. And now I got a hold of it. Take a look at that. Yeah, that looks good. So again, what I'm using here, this is a half inch to a half inch. 
and then the idea is I should be able to fish this back up in there okay well I literally had to shove my arm as far back into that cavity under the under the tub or under the shower pan here um, as far as I could get and it wasn't easy but I got the uh, I got the lines I got the hot side on the correct side <laughs> now it's just a matter of uh, cinching up the faucet and then I gotta seal it all up got the bath faucet on the bathtub I'm gonna turn that off and let's hit the pump It hasn't been long enough to know, but I've got everything pressurized and it's just bone dry. Including the, uh, the water pump. Those pre-made ones, they seem to be the only thing that really works. Well, I didn't leave the water pump on, but I have left everything sit kind of out before I sealed it back up. And so there's water in the lines and only the residual pressure. The water pump wasn't on, but everything's been bone dry. I, I left paper towels underneath all of the fittings. Um, also, as you can see here, like as an example, here's the water pump. And then that way I can just kind of come back and touch the paper towels. And because sometimes like, especially these metal fittings, you know, they, they might feel they might feel wet when um, when you touch them because they're cold. And so uh, I don't really detect anything. I'm gonna go ahead and seal this up. I'm gonna leave this lower cavity open. And I got it screwed back in and I went a little heavy on the silicone. I'm not of the school of thought where you take a bead of sil silicone and then run your finger up against it or just, you know, I just don't go too fat. And I did go a little fat on one of the beads. Essentially, I just you just want the you just want the silicone to cure, and when you start pushing on it and making it too thin, that's not a good thing. At least that's my opinion. So this is what I got. And yeah, there's so there's still that one little plug. I think I can silicone. I think I'll be able to put a bottle cap in there. Maybe like. Next time I have a beer, I'll remember to save the, the bottle cap and I can, I'll just silicone something in there, some sort of blank poker chip, something for that hole where the water miser used to reside. Getting those straight supply lines in there wasn't easy. It's a little bit cold, I don't know, about 45 degrees right now. And so I just kind of warmed them up and I just, I just bent them as good as I could to create a really short radius, a really small radius there and, and just kind of bent them in there to kind of make that right angle and they did push against the bracket a little bit so that's where I'm really depending on that silicone to be an adhesive and so that's another reason why I don't want to run my finger against that silicone bead and thin it out I want it to act as a glue and you know that was the process I used the first time and cleaning up the silicone when I did this last repair uh, you know leaving it as a bead it, it seemed to work. But yeah, I also ran a silicone bead around the faucet itself, around the fixture itself. It has a little plastic gasket and I don't think it's gonna leak, but it didn't seem like it would hurt. Okay. 
I'll just monitor down here to make sure that it's uh, you know that it's not leaking on me all right thanks guys and uh, I don't know what else to say <laughs> I hope this is the end